Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to update the server-side document generation OmniScript so that it only runs for token data and also we're going to hard code in that template ID. So I'm just here in the document template designer. I've got a new template that I've called case contact report filtered and what I'm going to quickly do is just get the ID for that particular template. So going into document templates opening up that new one and just copying that ID into my clipboard. Then coming into OmniScripts, we've got the single doc server side OmniScript there that came from static resources. And I'm just going to go ahead and just edit that. And I'm going to call it something else. So this one we're doing is a case contact, or eventually I'm going to do a case contact report with filters. So I'm just going to call it that case contact report, or actually contact case report filtered. And I'll put it there as well. And save that. So what we can see straight away is that we've got a number of different components in here and we've got some visibility rules. And for example, we can run the server side document generation or with token data or the PDF generation. So coming up to where it says our set generation input um, parameters, click on that. We can see that it's getting um, these values from previous steps. So one of them is the template ID over there, it's using the selected one. And if we actually click on to the server side doc generation with token data integration procedure step and click on that, we can see that the template ID is coming in from the previous step there. So I've got that ID on my clipboard, so I'm just going to override that with the template ID. So I'm essentially hard coding it in there. And then I'm just going to really quickly adjust some of these steps here. So because in this particular example, I'm using token data, I'm going to get rid of the other ones, just like that. And I'm going to update the visibility on this one because I always want that to show. And then we have to go ahead and update a few of the other things as well. So we don't need to get the templates because we are sending through that ID so we can get rid of that one. We can get rid of this pick template as well. And then looking at generation options, we don't need that either, but you can see that we've got some selections there. So for example, the first one um, shows you, you know, whether you're, you're clicking generate document or so forth. The output file format, this is what we need. So um, we've got here uh, oh, PDF document title and, and whatnot. So coming down to this set values before I delete this previous step, I'm going to get rid of selected template. The template type is Microsoft Word. So clicking in there, just going to update that to Microsoft Word. Or this could be your PowerPoint. Document title, so this is going to be our contact case report filtered. This could be whatever you want it to be. And then we've got our version ID. I don't think I need that, so I'm just going to get rid of it. We don't need the template ID in this particular step. The object ID comes in from that first step there. Uh, we will send through our token data map in a different step and then the attach file format. So in this example, I want it all to be just PDF or you can put in all if you want uh, the PDF and the word version. And so the same goes for this one. And save that. Um, and then the context ID, we can keep the same too. Then coming into our enter object, we want the object ID, but we don't need the template type. And by the way, that's where I got the Microsoft Word from. So it would either be Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint. So I'm going to delete that. And then we are left with just these four steps there. 
So the next step now is to put in our data raptor. So um, just to show you, if we go into data raptors, I've got a really um, quick and simple one ready to go. So it's called get contact cases filtered. And if you look here, all we're doing is we're sending in a contact ID. So firstly, we're getting some fields from the contact object. And then from the case object, we're getting a few fields as well. I've got nothing in formulas. And in output, I've just got a few things coming from case and these will be repeated. And then I've got just the account name, contact name and title coming in from contact. So what I'll do now is we're just going to drag that data raptor extract action and put it there. And we are going to just look for get contact cases filtered. And I like to have the step with the same name. And then in here, we've got our data source. So we're looking for that ID. So the filter value will be ID. And then the data source will be our object ID over there. So I'll just copy that in there. Okay. And let's just preview this and make sure that it works as we expect it to. So preview. I've got an object ID on my clipboard that I'll go to. Give that a chance to refresh and click next. Okay, and just looking at this step here, we can see that it's bringing in the data from that data raptor. So I don't need this step, so I'm just going to come in and get rid of this step now. One thing that I do need to do first is for this extract action and looking at the response, I want to reparent that JSON node and I'm going to call it just token data map like that. And then I'm going to copy token data map and where we have our set values coming down to token data map. I'm just going to replace this value with that node there. Let's use the percentage signs. We'll save them. Okay, and I just noticed output file format, we need to make that PDF as well. And save. And let's activate that and test it. Okay, and preview. All right, it says that it was successfully processed and I'll just check the action debugger to see what was sent through, token data map. All right, if I now navigate to the contact ID, We should see that file has attached to that record. Okay, so this is one that I've been using a few times. So let's check out this new one. And there you can see that those cases have come in. So this is it for this video. Um, I will come back to it though, because what you probably noticed is that at some point, so 1026, if you scroll down, um, it repeats itself. Um, and I have noticed that this is uh, an issue with the integration procedure that Salesforce provides us. So in my next video, I'll show you how to fix that.